Hello, F Sharp. How you doing? So this is the first in, it's not going to be a series, but sometimes what happens is I get asked questions that are really good questions. They don't fit into a particular series or theme or idea, but it's something I want to answer. And I, I want to, instead of just writing the email back to the participant, particular person or messaging them back in Slack, I like, you know, that would be really useful for everyone. So what I will do is I, I will put together a code example and walk you through the solution. And then I can reference that video for the person saying like, Hey, go check this out. And I'll include the code. And so you can kind of see this yourself, but it's, it's little things of like, oh, well, how do I do that in F sharp? And how do I do that transform? Or like, what, how do I approach that? But they're just kind of these weird one-offs. And so uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to call the series. It might change over time, but I'm kind of thinking of it as like, hey, it's a quick hit or, um, so these are going to be meant to be really short. Hopefully not going to go too long. So the question in this case had to do with uh, simulating, uh, simulating some data. And I'm using the idea of simulating a coin flip as my example. And what we're going to do is we want a function and it's going to flip a random number generator and generate a heads or tails count. And right now we have the non-recursive version of doing this. And what I, what I wanted to do is to show, hey, this is a very common thing to do in an imperative way. And I wanted to show, Hey, how would you do that using recursion? Cause this is a really common transform that you need to be able to do. And I have found like getting used to writing things in the recursive way to be really helpful. So I wanted to show for people coming from the more imperative background, like, Hey, how would you actually do something? using the recursive technique. And the way this is working right now in the non-recursive version is I'm passing in a random number generator and I'm passing in this parameter, which is the number of flips I want to perform. And now what I'm doing is I'm using mutable values here. These are all integers to keep track of things. I'm keeping track of my tails count, my heads count, and my flip count. And so as this little simulation goes, it, it's going to iterate as long as flip count is less than flips, which is the number of flips I want it to do. Keep it, keep looping, keep doing this. And so what it does is it generates the next value from the random number generator and it's generating a random float between zero and one. If it's less than 0.5, then we're going to say that that corresponds to tails. So increment the tails counter. If it's not less than 0.5, then we're going to increment the heads counter. And then we are going to increment the flip count. And then we're going to keep doing this while loop until we hit the number of flips that are desired. And at the end, we will generate our result, which is our simulation result, which is say, Hey, the number of tails and the number of heads, very silly thing. But the idea is to illustrate this transformation. We want to turn this into something recursive and just to prove that it works. I'm going to run this. And we get a simulation result with a tails count of 55 and a heads count of 45. And so we want to do a recursive transformation and we should still get the same result because we are good simulation engineers and we set the seed for our random number generator so that it is reproducible. Cool. Remember this result. Let's turn this into a, a recursive approach. And this is super common. So I'm going to say let recursive recursive, <laughs> so much harder to type when you think people are watching you. And again, we're going to pass in that random number generator system dot random. And then flips is also going to still be an end. So this has the same function signature. What I'm going to do differently this time is right off the bat, I'm going to say, let recursive loop. And I very often do this where I have the function that you call from the outside. It is not recursive, but inside of it, it's loop. It has a recursive loop function that it is using. And that recursive loop, what it is going to do is it is going to track the state of things. And so the first thing is the flip count, the uh, head count, 
in the tails count. And what it's going to do is say like, hey, if flip um, count is less than flips, then I want you to do something else. If flip count is no longer less than flips, then I want you to actually return the value. And in this case, what I want you to return is the tails count, which is equal to tails count and head count equal to head count. Okay. So flip our, the type inference is already figuring some stuff out. Say so like, okay, I see they're using flip count here, but you're comparing it to the flips flips. I know is an integer. So flip count must also be integer and head count and uh, tails count. It doesn't know yet because we haven't, it ha we haven't made the connection at the end. And so before I fill this in, cause that's going to be the recursive bit, I'm going to say, Hey, loop flip count starts at zero head count starts at zero and tails count starts at zero. And it's going to keep complaining until they fill this stuff here, here in the end. But the idea is that I'm going to define this recursive loop and then I'm going to call it at the end of my function. And that's going to be the entirety of what I want to do. So if it's less though, we need something in here. If it's less then what we're going to do is say, let next equal random next double get my next double. And we're going to use a similar structure here. Kind of. So if next is less than 0 0.5, then what are we going to do? <laughs> so this is where we can kind of get fun with recursion, then loop and flip count plus plus one. Head count is still just head count. It hasn't gone up because we count a next value of less than 0.5. We're saying that corresponds to tails going up. So we're going to do tails count plus one. Else loop flip count is still going up. In this case, head count is going up but tails count remains the same. Ba, ba, ba. Heads count. Ah, I'm being inconsistent with my naming convention. My, my, my apologies. I change that heads count. Cool. Change that everywhere. Good. And yep. So what is going on here? So this is where we've kind of done the recursive transformation. So instead of using mutables and this while loop, where we're having to remember to increment this counter. What we're doing now is we're saying, Hey, we have a recursive loop and each of these parameters is actually the state of our simulation is really what's happening here. And when we pass it in, we're going to say, Hey, if flip count is less than flips, then we want to do another kind of iteration of our loop. We draw another random. If it's less than 0.5, then we're going to call the same function again. We're going to loop again, but we are updating some of the values as we recurse. We're coming back in, but now they've been updated. Every time flip count is going up, we know that's happening. Heads count for less than 0.5 is not going up. Tails count is because for this branch in this branch, we are considering this a tails uh, was flipped. Versus this one where we say, no, heads count go up. If we reach the terminating condition, because each time flip count is going up, if flip count is now equal to flips, then instead of doing another kind of iteration of our loop, we're actually going to the exit branch. And we're saying, hey, now I want you to return this type, which is our simulation result. And so that is what the, the, the F sharp compiler is smart enough to look at recursive loops and say like, Hey, yeah, you have this one branch of your if statement, but that branch of the if statement is actually calling me again. And so it is smart enough to know that like, Hey, the results of an if then else expression has to be the same, 
but it knows you're recursing in this branch. And so the return type will always be this. And that's just the, the brilliance of the F sharp compiler. And so it knows that that's what you are giving back. And so let's see, uh, ba -ba -bum, system dot random one, two, three. Oh, and it's going to, it's going to complain that I have a naming collision here. So just so the compiler doesn't complain, I'm going to call this random generator two, but I'm giving it the same seed. So I should get the same results. So let result two equal recursive version. I'm going to give it random number generator two. And again, I want 100 flips. So if I run this, I'm going to have to run the whole thing. So I have those different types. Let's go. So this, and I'm going to scroll all the way down. Okay. I'm going to say, okay, R2 again. R2, so the result of our, our recursive version has tails count to 55, heads count of 45. The recursive version gives us the exact same result. So this is just a really quick example of how, yeah, you can take these while loops and turn them into these recursive loops. And for me, coming to F sharp at the very beginning, this felt way more intuitive and easier to do. But as I got more familiar with F sharp and I, as I got more comfortable with recursion, this has actually become a much more comfortable way of doing it. And part of what I like about it is that there's no mutation going on in here. And so you're not having to uh, remember like, Oh, am I mutating that in this branch or that branch of the if else statement? No, uh, the recursion is taking care of that for you. And if you're concerned about performance, you really don't need to because F sharp again is very smart, sees these recursive loops and generally turns them into while loops if you can. So it ends up being just as fast as the while version, even though it's using recursive loops because F sharp knows how to turn those into while loops. So, I hope this was helpful. This is just a real quick example of doing that transform from the while loop construct to a recursive function call. And I really recommend for your own sake and your own skill, learning to use these recursive loops. So hopefully that was helpful. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. Let me know if you have any other quick questions like this. Uh, I'd like being able to record these and be able to help lots of people at the same time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.